Hi everyone, my name is Karen. This is my channel Rather Be Reading and today I'm bringing to you my February book haul. My January book haul was quite small and sedate. This is not really the case for my February book haul. So let's jump straight in. We will, as always, start off with the um, library books that I picked up in February. I did pick up seven um, books in February, so let's see what they are. So the first one I have here is Bright Before Sunrise by Tiffany Schmidt. This is one of the books that I need to read for one of my goals this year. This is either from my physical to read list or my um, the books that I added on Goodreads like a really long time ago. I'm not sure which one this is from, but it's one of them. And I have no idea what this is. One night can change how you see the world. One night can change how you see yourself. So I don't know. I'm kind of like, is this, that kind of makes it sound like it's contemporary, but the cover and the title don't kind of lead me to contemporary. Although it does have a love heart on the spine, which normally means that it's romance, obviously. So I have no idea what this really is. So I need to read it for one of my challenges. I picked it up. Um, I then also picked up Arcana Rising by Cressley Cole. You guys will know if you've been watching my channel recently that I started this series, The Arcana Chronicles, to say why a paranormal that deals with the tarot um, and like people who embody the different tarot. Um, and this is the fourth book in the series. Um, you may recall that I mentioned that this is my library doesn't have book five, so I'm not sure how I'm going to get my hands on book five. I put in a request for them to purchase it, but I don't know whether they're going to. Um, but I did pick up book four, and then once I've read this, we'll figure out how to move forward about finishing the series. So I picked up that. I picked up Top Secret 21 by Janet Ivanovich. This is the 21st book in the Stephanie Plum series. This is women's fiction, chiclet, about a woman who is a bounty hunter but she is a very inept bounty hunter and shenanigans always ensue this has one of the longest running love triangles of all time and i'm simply basically continuing on with this series because i need to know how the love triangle works out so we have that and um, we then have another one that i picked up for one of those goals that i mentioned and that is the small hand by susan hill um which the small hand is a really small little book and it just says it says on the front a ghost story Again, I don't really know what this is about. I know Susan Hill wrote um, The Woman in Black, which I have not read, but I have seen the movie. So this is like a little novella almost. It's about 160, 170 pages. Um, so all I know is that this is a ghost story, but I'm interested. I've heard good things about Susan Hill, so I'm interested to read this and see whether she's an author that I want to try more from. I think I have another one of hers on my TBR because she wrote a book that's like a sequel to a Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier, which <laughs> we all know is one of my favorite books ever. So I have that on my TBR. So it'll be interesting to see whether I like her writing or not. Um, we then have one that you will have already seen on my channel because this was actually on my TBR this month, which is uh, The New Girl by R.L. Stein, the first book in the Fear Street series, which is a series that I don't know whether I've read this one. I've read a bunch of different Fear Street because Fear Street is huge. Like there's so many different like books and different series within kind of Fear Street itself. Um, and this is on my TBR because I got this out just this month, but it has a hold on it and I can't return it. So I need to get this one done this month, but I did also pick it up this month. Um, we have one more that was for a one of those challenges or goals that I mentioned, and that is Tease by Amanda Maciel. Again, I don't know what this is about. Oh, first line of the synopsis, Emma Putnam is dead and it is all Sarah Wharton's fault. And then their like tagline here is, we didn't mean to hurt anyone. Colour me intrigued. This might be a YA thriller or mystery, which right up my alley. So we picked up that. And then I also picked up One, Two, Buckle My Shoe by Agatha Christie. This is the 21st, maybe the 21st book in the somewhere around their book in the Hercule Poirot series. This is a series that I've been slowly working my way through. And so I picked this up this next one that I need to read. And that's that. So they're the library books. Let's move in to the ebooks. Um, I purchased two and then I have a bunch of neck alley arcs that I got this month. So um, we'll touch on the two that I purchased first. So the two that I purchased, the first of those is I'll Never Tell by Catherine McKenzie. This is a thriller. Um, this came up on like a Kindle Daily deal or on my book bub that I get. I'm not really sure which it was, but I recognize this as a book that I had previously marked as to read. And it was on sale for $1.49. So it's a thriller and it's about a 
um, woman who was family owned a summer camp. And I believe it was like 20 years ago and a girl was murdered at that camp. And it's now like 20 years later. And it's about, I think, all the family returning to that camp. And I presume it's all going to come back up about the mystery of what happened with that murder. That sounds so up my alley. I love a summer camp setting. And I love a summer camp setting, whether it's contemporary, but more particularly when it's horror or mystery or thriller. And I mentioned this, I think, in a video a while ago. I don't know why that is. I have a fascination with summer camp. I think it's because I'm Australian and we summer camp's, like, not a thing here. Like, that doesn't exist. Um, so I've always found it fascinating in, like, movies and, like, TV and stuff that you would see um, and books that I would, like, read from America growing up. So I've always been fascinated by summer camp. So very excited by that setting. And the second one I purchased was Vox by Christina Doucher. Again, another one that was on sale and I had recognized that I well I recognized this book because it was quite popular um but I had marked it as to read so this is a dystopian like sci-fi dystopian set in a world where women have been given a limit to the number of words that they can speak in a day I think it's a hundred words um, and women aren't allowed to say more than a hundred words in a day and that's kind of the main crux of the um like of the plot um very intrigued. This got kind of like very, like kind of was on booktube quite a lot last year. Um, so interested to read that eventually and see if I like it or not. Um, we then have eight NetGalley arcs that I was approved for this month. I have gone a little bit NetGalley crazy recently. I've, I've ramped it back in the last two or three weeks, um, but I do have eight that I was approved for. So we're going to go through those. The first one I have is Last Girls by Dimitra Brodsky. This one has a published date of the 5th of May. This is a YA contemporary, but it is about a group of girls who live on some kind of compound. Um, and I I don't think it, well, it might be cultish, but it's not like a compound is in like a hippie kind of compound. It's more like where they're might, like more like doomsday-ish, I think, where it's like they're trained with like weapons and all of that type of thing. Um, and then some kind of danger comes to the the compound. I don't really know too much about it apart from that, but I was intrigued. Um, and so I thought I'd give that one a go. I was also approved for The Second Mother by Jenny Milchman. This one has a published date of 7 July. Um, this one is about a woman who moves to a remote island off the coast of Maine um, to, to like, be a teacher. And we know that she's like fleeing something from her past. But then when she like gets to the island, has been there for a while, she starts to discover that maybe there's more secrets on this island than what she thought. Again, similar to the summer camp thing, I love an island setting um, uh, for my thrillers. Um, so that was part of why I was interested in that one. I was also approved for a book called Honeymoon Alone by Ma Nicole McCauley. Um, this one has a publish date of the 3rd of December 2019. This one actually has already been published. Um, and this one's a romance, and I believe it's about a woman who was left at the altar. Um, and I know that she's going to London, I assume on her honeymoon, um, by the title. Um, and it's just all about that. And I just thought that sounded kind of intriguing and like something I was interested in checking out. Uh, the next one I was approved for is Who We Were by B.M. Carroll. This one has a published date of the 7th of May. This is another thriller. And this one is just basically all about a group of people who are going to their 20-year high school reunion. Um, and it's all about all of the secrets and stuff that come out at that high school reunion. I didn't really know, need to know too much about it apart from that. Um, that just sounded very interesting. Uh, the next one I was approved for is The Cake King by Rosie Chase. This is another one that had already been published. Did I say Who We Were, sorry, had to publish it the 7th of May, but who? Um, the Cake King by Rosie Chase was published on the 10th of January. This is another romance. This one is about a celebrity, like there's a, the, the male character is a celebrity baker, like a really famous celebrity baker. And then the main female character is very, I think, comes from kind of an impoverished background. And she is getting involved in some kind of baking competition show where obviously if, like she wins it to change her life. And I think it's about a romance between her and the celebrity baker. Um, it just sounded very like cute and intriguing and like something that might be a bit of like cutesy fun romance. Uh, the next one I was approved for is one that I actually was on is on my TBR this month because it has a publish date of 18th of March and that is The First Wife by Jill Childs. This one is about two women who were friends some years ago like when they were teenagers and they I think had drifted apart or something happened and they're kind of reconnected and one of them invites the other up to her holiday home um, and when she gets there um, 
the woman whose holiday home it is has a daughter and she starts to think that the daughter like looks like she's being mistreated or like something weird's going on with the daughter but then there's all kind of weird stuff going on i don't really know too much about it apart from that but it just sounded kind of interesting um the next one is What Lies Between Us by John Mars. This one has a publish date of the 15th of May. Um, and this one, I don't really know what it's about. I was in, I basically requested this because of the name John Mars, who I haven't actually read anything by, um, but he um, had a book recently, The One, that was really, really popular, and I was really interested in that one. Um, and so when I saw his name and this was a new thriller that he was coming out with, I just basically requested it. But the, but the synopsis, I can't remember what it is now and I should have written it down, but it does sound very, very intriguing. So I encourage you to read that synopsis because I remember it being really good. Um, and then the last one that I was approved for is The Perfect Father by John Glatt. This is, has a publish date of 21 July. And this one is actually a nonfiction true crime. This one follows the case of um, Chris Watts, um, who is a man who um, murdered his wife and two children. And it's about that story. I believe this one was quite publicized in the United States. I didn't hear too much about it um, in Australia. It wasn't hugely publicized here, but I remember hearing a few people that I follow um, online talking about it who are based in the United States. Um, and so I saw this and the name kind of rung a bell and it just sounded like it'd be an interesting true crime story. And so I requested that and was approved for it. So those are the ebooks. So now let's move on to the physical books that I acquired this week. We have a stack here. So first off, we have um, the books from my order to book depository. So you will know that one of some, you guys probably know that one of my goals for this year is to, um, sorry, I need to move <laughs> my legs. Um, one of my goals for this year is to reduce my physical TBR. Um, and so one of the ways that I'm aiming to do that is I have reduced my monthly order. So I used to place an order to book depository every second pay. I get paid on a fortnightly basis. So every like second pay period, I would place an order and I've reduced that to every third pay period. So this was the thir first one that I placed this year. However, I did order one more book than I normally would. So the way I normally place my orders to book depository is I normally get one book that I already have read that I don't own a physical copy of that I just want to have on my shelves. So that doesn't add to my TBR. And then I normally have one like new book that's either a standalone or the first book in a series. And then, or, and then I also try to normally order something that's a serious continuation, um, a book that I already own, like the first or second or however many books in that series, but I don't own the whole thing. And so I normally try to buy at least one that's a continuation. Um, I ended up ordering four books this week, one of which I have previously read. So there's three that are going onto my TBR rather than just two, but I don't know what was going on. I just happened to be on Book Depository placing this order. And when I was like checking like through my wish list on Book Depository, there were a lot of the books were just way cheaper than they normally are. And so I just ended up ordering one more than I normally would because I wanted to get them while they were like for a decent price. <laughs> Enough explanations. Let's talk about the book. So the first one I grabbed is The Book of Ivy by Amy Engel. This has been on my like radar, something that I wanted to read for a long time. I was interested in this duology because this is the first book in a duology. Um, and then she came out with her um, standalone adult thriller, like dark thriller, The Roanoke Girls, which I also own. Um, but I am still interested in reading this, um, which is a dystopian duology that follows, I believe it's a um, follows a society where there was a war or whatever and now there's like a upper class and a lower class but the way that the upper class one of the ways that they keep the lower class people in line is that they marry off um the daughters of the lower class to the sons of the upper class to kind of stop the lower class from rebelling um, and the female character is from the lower class and she's being married off to one of the most like upper level sons of this um upper class society and but she has been trained to marry him so that she can murder him and start a rebellion or something and I've just always been very intrigued by that plot um I just think this is good. like it's not super big or anything this book's only like how many pages is this less than 300 pages so I had this on my radar for a while and so I finally purchased it uh and the next one that I purchased was the cheerleaders by Cara Thomas I mean this just is so up my alley a cheerleader murder mystery like thriller about cheerleaders being murdered. I don't even know too much about it apart from that. I don't need to know more than that. 
I have another one of her thrillers, Cara Thomas's Little Monsters. I own that on my TBR as well, which is another one I want to read. Um, I then purchased Us Against You by Frederick Buckman. This is the sequel to Bear Town. I have Bear Town on my TBR, so I wanted to get this sequel. This is a bit well, Bear Town is a a contemporary that is set in a small town that is very focused on like the hockey team is one of the biggest things about this town. And it's about I believe one of the prominent members of the hockey team is accused of rape. Um, and it's all about how that affects that town. Um, I've been very interested in that for a long time. So I um, own the first book. So I just got this so that I'd have both books when I eventually got around to reading it. Um, and then I also purchased a copy of Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. I have read this previously, but a long time ago. Um, and I wanted to own a copy. So I really want to reread this. Um, I'm not sure that I'll get to this reread this year because I already have quite a lot of rereads like on my like plans for this year. Um, but I wanted to have a copy and so I was looking through and this copy, which is the um, Pengu Penguin English Library um, edition, um, was on sale for a pretty cheap price. And so I thought, this edition's kind of nice. I will grab it. And so I did. And so now I have a copy of this on my shelves. Um, so that was my book depository order. Then out of nowhere, I got an email from Dimix. So Dimix is basically Australia's equivalent, I would say, of like Barnes and Noble, um, but it's very expensive. Um, and I got an email from them. I shop there very rarely because I just find their books too expensive. Um, and I got an email and it was just like, we haven't seen you in a while. Here is a, I think it was a buy one, get one 50% off voucher. And Dimix almost never have sales. They have like one VIP sale every year. That's like, if you're a member of their rewards program, which I am, then you get like an extra 10% off. Like we well, get not an extra because they're not having a sale. You just get 10% off or you get like bonus book lovers rewards, or I don't know what it is, but like their sales aren't that great. Um, so to get a voucher for a buy one, get one 50% off, like I say, they rarely have sales. I couldn't pass it up. And so I went and I ended up purchasing two books. Um, and I wanted to get ones that were like, have these are um, both books that have been out for quite a while because I wanted to get ones that weren't super expensive because even with the temp, like, so adult paperbacks, like newer release adult paperbacks from Dimmicks are like $35. So even with a buy one, get one 50% off voucher, that's more money than I wanted to spend. So Cutting to the chase, the first one that I got was The Woman in Cabin 10 by Ruth Ware. I own, I think, all of Ruth Ware's other books. Her most recent one, is it The Turn of the Key? Yeah, The Turn of the Key. Um, I don't own in physical copy, but I have it on my Kindle. But I want to read all of her books in publication order. Um, and I've been interested in her for a long time. I've been interested in her since even before she published this one, just since she had In a Dark, Dark Wood. Um, and this is the only one... That I didn't own and so this was $20 which is pretty good for an adult paperback like I was saying um, and so I grabbed that and then in a similar vein I grabbed A Stranger in the House by Sherry Le, Pen Le Pena. I have read and I'm want to guess by Sherry Le Pena. that's one of my favorite thrillers. I recently read her most recent one Someone You Know quite enjoyed that one and I have her I think her debut, The Couple Next Door on my TBR, but I didn't have this one. And so again, this one was $20. And so I thought I would grab these two. So with the voucher, I ended up paying $30 for both of these. So 15 bucks a piece, which for brand new paperbacks from Dimmix is a steal, quite frankly. So I grabbed those two. So they're the only books that I purchased this month, but um, I was, so I kind of tweeted about this. Some of you may have seen it. I was helping my mom this past couple of weeks um she my mom's so funny I was around it I think I mentioned this in a video I was around at her house and she was saying that she didn't have anything left to read because she'd read all her books and I was like oh and then I like was pointing out someone on the shelf and I was like oh so you read this one and she was like and she's like oh what's that one about and then she was looking at it, she's like oh no I haven't read this and so I helped her get a Goodreads account and go through and catalog all of the books that she owns um I put them all onto a shelf of like owned books and then also marked all of the ones that she read has read as read so that she can use Goodreads to keep track of what she's read and what she hasn't read and what she owns. Cause there's a couple of authors that she really loves 
that she likes to buy all of their books and read all of their books, but she can never remember which one she's read and which one she hasn't. So I got her all set up with that. Um, but also one of the things that I always do is I take whatever books my mom has read that I'm interested in, I take off her shelves and move to my TBR until I've read them. And then I give them back to her. And so I have five books here that I took from my mom's shelves that she has read that I want to read. Um, and so the first one is The Distant Hours by Kate Morton. So... I have quite a few Kate Morton on my TBR. So I've read The Lake House by Kate Morton, which I enjoyed. And then my mum borrowed that from me and she read it and then she really liked it. And then so then she bought a bunch more Kate Morton, um, this being one of them. And I actually have, she's read a couple of them previously and I had those on my TBR as well that I borrowed from her. But she this is the most recent one that she'd read. And funnily enough, this is one of the ones that is on one of my goals for this year of either my... Um, like of the oldest books on my TBR, on my TBR, on my like physical, like written out want to read list or on my Goodreads, can't remember. But so this just comes in really handy. So I'll definitely be reading this this year because I need to read it for one of my goals. Um, I don't know exactly what this is about. I just know that Kate Morton generally writes dual timeline novels. There's normally a historical setting and then a present day setting. And they normally have some kind of mystery. So they're like women's fiction with historical aspects and mystery aspects so I grabbed that one I then grabbed Our House by Louise Candlish this is one that I actually gave to my mom as a present for either like her birthday or mother's day or something um this one I think is about a family who have a house and one day they arrive home and they find strangers moving into their house and it's a thriller in some way I don't know too much about it apart from that this is one that my mom my mum really hated the ending to this. I shouldn't tell me what it was, but she was just like, the ending is shit. And I was like, okay. So that makes me even more intrigued to read this because I want to know what about the ending that my mum really hated. So I grabbed that. And then this is one that my parents have owned for ages. And this is a very, very popular book in Australia because this is an Australian author. Um, and for some reason, I had just never taken it from her shelves before, um, even though it is something that I have kind of had in my mind that I should read. And that is The Slap by Christos. Oh, Seolicus. I butchered that. I apologize. So this is a, so, and it was also made into like an Australian, like an Australian television series, but this is pretty chunky. This is like, how many pages is this? Almost 600 pages. This is about, I believe that there's a group of people at a barbecue, like a whole, like big, it's a big barbecue, lots of friends, family, all of that. When someone slaps a child, but the child that they slap is not their child. And I think it's all about that and the repercussions of that. And I think you follow the incident over and over again, but like from different people's perspectives. From, so from like the person who slapped to the mother of the child and the father of the child, people just brand people who are at the barbecue, all of that. So I say this was very popular in Australia when this was published, which was years ago. Yeah, 2008, so like 12 years ago. But one day, eventually, I'll get around to reading it. Um, and then we have one of one of the authors that I mentioned before, of authors that my mom really loves and likes to read a lot from, is Leanne Moriarty. And my mom had two on her shelves that she's read that I haven't read or didn't and didn't own. And they are Nine Perfect Strangers by Leanne Moriarty. This is one of her more recent ones. Um, and I know this is a thriller. Well, I, I'd say thriller. Thriller is overstating it for Leanne Moriarty. They're mystery, like women's drama mysteries. Um, and I know this one is set at like some kind of like spa and then something happens. I don't know. And then this is one of her older ones, which is Three Wishes. And I don't know if this one's got a mystery element. I think this one might just be more straight women's fiction. And then I don't know what this is about. It's about triplets, apparently. I literally don't know what this is about, except that it's about triplets, but... I would like to eventually read all of Leanne Moriarty. And like I said, my mom had read these, these two. And I, she hasn't read all of hers because I actually own a couple that I have on my TBR that my mom hasn't read, um, which I'll lend her so that she can read them because she really likes Leanne Moriarty. Anyway, oh, just joking. I didn't mean to show this, <laughs> this one. I took this off my mom's shelf thinking that I didn't have this. And then it turns out I actually already own a copy of this on my TBR. And I accidentally included it on the bottom of the pile because I meant to give it back to my mum. 
and then I forgot <laughs> that I already had some I didn't need to talk about this. So this one's not included. And I didn't include this in my numbers when I did my how many books came onto my TBR in my wrap up. I didn't include this one. So if you were just counting and thinking that I lied about the numbers, I didn't. This one is not added to my TBR. It's already on my TBR. So pretend like I didn't mention this one. So that's it. Those are all of the books that I acquired in the month of February. Hope, like I said, this is a bigger TBR, bigger TBR, bigger book haul than I'm hoping to have um, for most months this year because I really am trying to reduce my TBR. But like I said, there are a couple of circumstances. It's not super often that I take books from my mum's shelf um, and it's the, the Dimmick's voucher thing. Like, that's not a thing that like ever happens. So like I said, there was just a few things this month that meant I got a few more books than what I normally would, but that's okay. We were really reserved in January. Hopefully we could be really reserved in more months moving forward and can reduce my TBR. But those are all the books that I acquired. I would love to chat with you guys in the comments down below if you've read any of these books, um, if you've got any thoughts on them or how your guys' book purchasing has been going recently. Are you guys trying to <laughs> be restrained are you succeeding are you failing or do you just not give a shit you're just like well let me buy all the books which is basically what my um tactic has been for like the last four years but that tactic has resulted in a 400 plus book tbr so hence the trying to reduce it anyway please like this video if you liked it please subscribe if you want to see more from my channel that is all i have for this video today bye guys